What's up guys, it is now time to move on to the more complex mechanics. This tutorial will be about having your camera lock onto a target and having your character strafe around that target. Now for the animation side of this mechanic, you are going to want to make a bunch of new animations. These animations be in the transition from your idle pose into this battle ready pose. I highly recommend you use references just in case you can't find any, which was my situation. You're probably going to want to stand up and record yourself actually doing this and then use yourself essentially as a reference. After you do that, you're going to want to animate him breathing. If you watched my idle animation tutorial is pretty much the same procedure as I used there but just in this stance. After you've done the idle animation go ahead and make a running animation for when your character is in this battle stance but you're not just going to do one you're going to do eight of them. You're going to want to have a forward run animation, a forward left run animation, a left animation, a back left animation, a backwards animation, a back right animation, a right animation and a forward right animation. Also for each one you're going to want to go in and make a transition animation from the run back into the idle battle pose and you're going to want to do this for every single side. I have a few tips to help save your life. All you really need to focus on is the fact that you're only really doing animations for the forward, left, back and right. However for diagonal animations like let's say the forward right you can copy and paste the exact same animation you did for the forward side and then after you do that all you have to do for every single keyframe is just rotate the legs so that they're facing the way you want to run and also rotate the torso slightly in that direction but then rotate the head so that it's facing the front. For the Patreon exclusive plus I will be making this blend file available so you'll have all these animations and you won't have to worry about animating them but honestly guys the best way to learn is to just use references jump out your comfort zone record yourself and just copy down the key poses of your own recording trust me you'll be fine and that's all you need to know in terms of the animation side of this mechanic but for the logic bricks now this is where this tutorial gets spicy so uh try to keep up. We are essentially making another idle state and another running state. This new idle state will be state number four and this new running state will be state number five. To get from our normal idle position into our battle ready idle position, add a keyboard sensor. Make this the Q key or any key that you want. Set this to tap. Get a state actuator. Make this state four. Wire these up together. Add an action actuator. And hook it up to the same mind controller that we just made for it to go into state four. Get the idle to lock on animation, whatever you called it. Set the start and end frames. Now if you press B to go into the game engine and press Q, it does exactly what we want it to do. Now to keep him breathing, go into the armatures or logic bricks and go into state 4. Get a noise sensor, get an action actuator, go and get your lock on idle animation. And then for the priority, make this something high like 99. Change play to loop stop. Then state 1, add the message actuator. Hook that up to the same end controller telling it to go to state 4. And we're going to be sending this message over to the character controller. And this message is going to be lock. And then in your character controller's logic bricks, add a message sensor and make it receive the same message that we sent. Add a state actuator, make it state 4. And now if we take a look in the game engine and press Q, our character continues breathing. Now what we need is to have our character lock onto a target once it enters the lock state. So go into your enemy object's logic bricks, add another message actuator, hook this up to the select and controller, move this up and then send this over to the character armature. And then for the subject have this be lock. And they're also going to have another message actuator and this message is going to be to the camera lock system. And for this message we're going to have it be lock enemy one. For the message to the character armature, copy the message, go over to your character armature, add a message message sensor, paste the message in, put this up to the same and controller as the keyboard sensor and then in our camera look system add a message sensor, go into your camera look system's logic bricks, add a game property and then name this property something like lock enemy. Add a property actuator, we're going to hook that up and then in the property section we're going to get our property lock enemy and then we're going to put the value at 1. Go into your character armature, add a message actuator, also hook that up, we're going to send this message over to the camera look system and for the message we're going to tell it to lock. Copy the message and then the camera look system's logic bricks, get a message sensor, paste the message, get a state actuator, make this state 2, hook this up and then in state 2 get a property sensor and we're going to have it so that if our lock enemy property sensor is 1, get an edit object actuator, track 2 and then for the object have this be enemy 1, make the track axis negative y, hook this up, get our character controller, go into the logic bricks and in state 4 get a noise sensor and then for the actuators go and find the edit object actuator that we made to make our cube face the front and then hook that up so that it always faces this front empty. Since the whole camera look system is going to be facing in that direction. Quickly go ahead and do the same for the other one. For the message sent to the camera look system, instead of lock enemy number one, put lock enemy number two. And then your camera look system's logic bricks, add a new message sensor, and a paste of lock enemy number two message in the message sensor. Get a property actuator, hook it up, and then for the lock enemy property, we're going to put the value to number two. And then in state two, add a property sensor, and when the lock enemy property is number two, it tracks the second enemy object. Hook those up, give these the same settings, and also one thing you're going to want to have is another mouse actuator, hook those up, and then 
then for the minimum and maximum values, set the negative 90 to negative 1 and then set the maximum to 1. Do the exact same for the x-axis. So now if we test the second one, it locks onto the second one just as well as it locks onto the first one. Now we need to do the animations for when the character strafes around the target. Go into our character armature's logic bricks, go into state 4 and then get all our directional keys, add an OR controller and then hook all the directional keys up, get a state actuator, hook this up and then make this state 5 and go into state 5 and what we're going to have here is when we press forward, left, right, back, forward, left, forward, right, back, left, back, right, we're going to have all the run animations corresponding to the keys pressed. So go ahead and get your run animations for all eight directions. For each one of them, set them to loop end. And for the priority, this is very important because since these animations are in the same state and some of them using the same keys as one another, you don't want to have all these priorities being the same because they will clash with one another. So you need to order their priorities based on which ones naturally override over one one another. Typically speaking, if you have all your animations in this order where it's front, left, right, back, front, left, front, right, back, left, back, right, RBG is going to prioritize the directional animations over the diagonal animations. So you need to make your diagonal animations lower than your directional animations. Now the next thing to do is have it so that the run back to idle animation plays according to which direction you're running in. We're going to need to give each one of our running animations frame properties and have it so that if the frame is between 1 and 60, which is when the animation is going to be playing, and then we let go of the key in that animation's direction then it's going to play the run to idle animation for that direction get your property list and add eight game properties name these properties accordingly to the animations and then assign each one of these properties to the animations frame properties add eight property sensors and i've each of the properties be for each of the directions for each one change equal to interval and then have the minimum be one and have the maximum be 60. get eight iron controllers hook them up find the actuator for state four and the message actuator telling your character controller to also go into state 4, get the null controller and then connect all the directional keys to the null controller and then what we're going to want to have is a property actuator, go back into state 4, add a property and me I already have one, it's called run on beat but for you name this something like just run and set the value to 1 and then in state 5 what we want to do is have it so that when the directional keys are not pressed it turns that running property off so find your run property and set the value as 0, hook that up, add a property sensor and then when your run property is equal to 0 and a certain and run animation is active then it is going to activate the run to idle animation what you're going to do is get the run to idle animation for each direction after you finish doing those hook those up with the properties in the direction that match if any of these run actions are not active then the frame property resets itself back to zero and the way to do it is to get an actuator copy the name of the actuator in which the animation is in paste it and then press the invert button add a property actuator connect those up get the property for the direction that matches and then on the value put zero do this for all the other eight directions, link them up. And now one of the last things we need is to have our character move. So in state five, add eight add controllers, link each of the run properties for each direction to the controllers, add eight message actuators, hook each of them up, send them to the character controller, put the name of the animation down in the direction that it's running, go into your character controller's logic bricks, go into state five, add eight message sensors, and then put the messages for each one where they need to be. Add eight motion actuators, also go into state four, pin the away sensor in the edit object, track to actuator hook it up in state 5 for each one of the motions put the speed go into your character's armature go into state 4 and with the actuator telling the armature to go into state 5 you're gonna have a message actuator have it be sent to the character controller name the message something like lock run copy the message select your character controller go into state 4 add a message sensor paste the message get a state actuator another set at state 5 hook that up go into state 1 pin the same sensor and actuator that is telling the character controller to go into state 4 because we're gonna need that in state 5 and then in the game engine give it a test and you should see that it works pretty much fine.